Hello, I'm Eric St. Louis, co-director of the NAPS2 Polysomnography Core Laboratory and a professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic Rochester in the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science. Today, I'm going to briefly address you about how we diagnose REM sleep behavior disorder. The ICSD-3, which stands for International Classification of Sleep Disorders Third Edition, requires two chief elements for the diagnosis of REM sleep behavior disorder. These include a clinical feature of dream enactment, that is complex vocal and or motor behaviors, which are often violent and involve screaming, shouting, arm flailing, punching, or kicking, but may also involve nonviolent behaviors that appear purposeful and mirror the content of a dream. These may be present either by history or recorded during polysomnography, which is an in-lab sleep study. The second necessary part for diagnosis of REM sleep behavior disorder is the presence of REM sleep atonia loss. REM sleep atonia is the normal state of paralysis during REM sleep. So REM sleep without atonia or REM sleep atonia loss is the quality of increased muscle activity during REM sleep, which may be measurable and quantified. This tool known as the Mayo Sleep Questionnaire asks a core question about REM sleep behavior disorder that has a high sensitivity for the diagnosis of the condition compared to polysomnography and a high specificity for the exclusion of other conditions, especially in older adults. And this gives you the flavor of what many of the behaviors are like. The core question is, have you ever seen the patient appear to act out his or her dreams while sleeping, punched, flailed arms in the air, shouted, or screamed, for example. Here I will show you now recorded from an in-lab polysomnogram, an older man with typical manifest manifestations of severe textbook REM sleep behavior disorder with violent sleep focal and motor behaviors. You can begin to see movement under the bed sheets and then begin to hear vocalization, uttering, some agitation evident in the speech. Notice that the eyes remain closed, so the patient is asleep despite the very violent movements, even landing a punch on the bed, and throws a final punch. This is an older recording, but still shows a prototypical and rather dramatic case of REM sleep behavior disorder. Not all cases are so obvious or violent as this one. In terms of the polysomnogram muscle activity qualities, known as REM sleep without atonia or RISWA for short, there are three main types. There is phasic muscle activity, which are bursts of muscle activity with the measurable voltage, which is the height of the activity, as well as the duration, which is the width of the activity. There's also tonic muscle activity, which is a more graded increase of the muscle activity voltage background or any muscle activity, which could be either one of these or both at the same time. This activity is tabulated by established scoring criteria and then divided uh, uh, all of the positive activity over the total REM sleep time to yield a percentage or density of abnormal muscle activity, which has proven to be very helpful for diagnosis in that REM sleep behavior disorder patients have a lot of this activity, whereas normal controls have typically very little. Here shown in the top pane is a typical example of REM sleep behavior disorder with profound REM sleep without atonia, as shown by the red arrows. Here is mostly bursts of phasic muscle activity shown in the red arrows. By contrast, in the upper pane, you see the blue arrow pointing out the chin muscle activity which is very limited. So sometimes you can see this is very patchy uh, and spread out between different sides of the body and different limbs. The four muscle channels are recorded from the legs and the arms from each one independently. 
<clears throat> By contrast, on the bottom, you see normal REM sleep atonia or paralysis with barely any registrable muscle activity seen. And here, the examples uh, clearly illustrate the distinction between the normal state and the patient with REM sleep behavior disorder. Well, if you are puzzled or have questions about REM sleep behavior disorder diagnoses, I'd like to acknowledge and point you toward our colleagues in the NAPS consortium, all of whom are experts in the diagnosis of this uh, sleep condition. And I thank you for your attention, encourage you to contact us at the NAPS consortium with any questions or at the email shown. And thank you very much for your attention.